Well, well, well. What do we have here? For those of you that are uninformed of whatever goes on on this channel, this is the Brox and Max channel. A whole bunch of stuff happens on this channel, from truck stuff to junk to more truck stuff. But anyway, truck shows, etc. A little bit of wrenching on stuff, like this apparatus here. This kind of showed up. I don't know a lot about it other than a bunch of rusty tin covers. It's got two stacks, which doesn't really mean anything. Could be sound deadening, muffling if you will. It's got a pretty good sized radiator on it. It's about as tall as me, and I'm 6'4". What's behind the tin? It's a pretty big generator being that my handy andy little forklift had to pick it. Didn't struggle, but still, quite a bit of weight here. Oh my god. Would you look at that? We have a 12 cylinder Detroit diesel generator. Twin turbo to boot. pulled from an operating facility. I'm assuming it runs. And that's the whole point of this video. To find out if there's any life left in this thing. Let's see if we have any... Ooh, we have air. That's a positive. Got a little bit of water in there. also a positive. Got to remove that piece of tin that must have fallen down on it when it got transported here. Looks like it's got some pretty new filters on it. Let's see what the oil situation is like. My god, I can barely see it on the stick. It's so brand new. in there just so it's not playing games with me. Yep, right to the full mark. Well, this is exciting. This is very promising. Six hundred and seventy-eight hours. I wonder if that, that's got to be original. There's the fuel hookup. Another six cylinders on this side. Huh. I don't know what that situation is going on in there. It looks like a hydraulic tank. But anyway, I'm going to check a few things. Hook up a battery. I may not hook up fuel right this very second. Let's just see if it will turn over. I will see. Obviously it's got twin blowers on it. I'll see if the emergency shutdown flappers are functional. Obviously it must have functioned at some point. You got this electric cylinder. Yeah, it's not air, obviously. We're not dealing with a truck here, but it's a electric shutoff just in case. I'll disconnect this and make sure this is working like it's supposed to, just in case it does run away on me. I would mess around and take valve covers off and check injectors, but from what I was told, it actually wasn't running that long ago. So we're not talking years. We're not even, I don't even think we're talking months. So this should be interesting. Gonna have to stay tuned for this one. Upon further inspection, clipping off some plastic ties and whatnot. I'm pulling on the return line that goes to this tank. Obviously not hydraulic like I told you in the beginning of this video. This must be a starter bladder that it 
uses that electric pump to pull fuel from, I'm assuming, a very large tank outside of this power plant here. Must be when these were built in order to just have them all contained, it did have to supply fuel of some sort. So I'd say that's probably a 30 gallon little bladder. I don't know if there's anything in it. I guess I can open that tin up and find out. Actually, I can't. I gotta drill some holes. It's always one bolt that holds up the shell. I'll have to cut that and remove it real quick. But it sounds, it sounds like it's empty. And it's definitely not empty. You've got to be kidding me. Okay. Well, what am I going to do now? I'm going to see if one of these... One of these right here is the draw, so it can draw fuel out of this tank instead of messing around with this. This might be a two-way system, possibly. I'll have to look further into this. But meanwhile, i got to take some more stuff apart. i got to take care of this quick before I forget. <laughs> Let's see if it actually works. Not good. Not good at all. Okay. You heard that thud. That's what it's supposed to sound like, but it's supposed to shut off quickly, not when it just decides to feel like it. I'll probably just get a vice grip and put it on there, and that'll be my quick way of doing it. Obviously this, that functions, and there's these dual linkages here to shut both off at the same time. Getting closer. in a long time. Probably never ran away. I'm going to leave it in the shutoff position for now and inspect one more thing that I forgot about. There's some trickiness with generators that they don't have throttle linkage like a truck. So obviously this is for some type of electric deal to make this work. Need to make it so I can at least shut it off and give it some throttle. Just trying to figure out where the throttle is. But this is the, this has to disappear for what I need to do to get this to run. I'll just break this nut loose. Okay, got that nut off. What happens now? Okay. What I am concerned about is being that it's a generator, it may just fire up and go to, let's say, 1500 RPM or whatever it's set at because there's not enough linkage on this stuff that I'm familiar with, like a truck. Pulled the battery cables over here on this side. And that was mighty nice of somebody to mark which cable is what. I'll put the batteries right here. Put them on the charger for a little bit. Last thing before I hook them up and get them charging. So let's see how many volts we're dealing with here. Well, of course, we're dealing with 24 volts. Okay. Not the end of the world. You just have to wire them up different than what I'm used to. 
So in order to do 24, you got your 12 and 12, and instead of hooking the negative and negative up, like what I was intentionally going to do, to hook this negative here, and then use a jumper, you have to cycle it around to make 24. You're basically adding two batteries and making the cycle go this way instead of this way. Is the only way I can describe it. Just gotta turn this battery around like this. Hook the positive up. And then, I just need to get a jumper to there. And then of course I don't have the jumper because that did not come with it. So I'm gonna do some tricky stuff and put the negative on here, positive on here, and all I have is this jumper piece which I can retrofit and make do. sure it has not enough juice to get this running. But for the time being, why not give it a shot? Just want to make sure my that is shut off. Let's see. Off. Okay. What else is going on here? Oh my god. I'm going to close that really slow. I don't see a start button in there. Again, going to close this really slow. Okay, so finding out that that fuel tank is definitely hooked up. You have two lines here. One is a draw. Well, I say that. This one's a draw right here, and that's going to the tank. And then there's a return that also goes to the tank. But then there's also a double return and a double draw that these are hooked to. So there was obviously two tanks, obviously one big one that's no longer here, but there's still that contained unit that's still hooked up. And I'm assuming the fuel's good in it because all of the fuel filters and everything look good on this. I'm gonna hook up my little push button start here and give it a whirl see what happens the button is on we have power contact all right so obviously I don't have enough juice I'm gonna put the charger on there getting this sneaky suspicion that there actually is something wrong with this because I can't quite make it turn a fan blade or anything with the charger on it so I went to the front of the motor with a breaker bar and a socket trying to make it turn now granted it's a pretty good size motor but I'm a pretty good sized guy so I could think that I could at least turn it a little bit and I couldn't get enough leverage on it the way that it's sitting here on my forks so what I ended up doing is I took this flywheel guard off because when they took this out of service, they weren't exactly kind to it. So it was all mangled and dented up anyway. I cut it out of the way and I put my tire iron, stuck it in there, and of course trying not to break the blade. And tried to make it turn a little bit. And it actually does turn. And you can see the fan blade turning a little bit. So that makes me happy. I'd rather it have completely shot dead batteries that I'm trying to resurrect over another stuck generator like I have. I also have a V12 Cummins. A 1710 cubic inch generator 
and that does not turn over. You can check that out in my other videos. I'll post a link in the description so you can check that out. So I guess now, I just keep waiting. Well, this is about attempt number three in between trying to get this started. I had two flat of batteries, so this is going to be brand new batteries hooked up to this system. I also found out that it's got dual heating elements. They're not technically block heaters, but they are warming up the block, just the heating element isn't inside the block like a normal block heater would be. But regardless, it's better than nothing. And it's on both sides. I got them plugged in. See if we can get something warmed up here. And then I'll wire up some more brand new 12 volt batteries in series, make 24 volt. I'm gonna cut this off because I got the screw down type battery instead of the post type like those connections have. And that just seems to be what we normally have. And these batteries obviously are not going to stay with this unit just enough to start it. Let's see if it cranks over like it's supposed to now with brand new batteries. Okay, it's definitely a good sign. Still a little bit slow, but I'll let it warm up a little more because it's pretty cold this time of year. Well, it's been a little while here. Not a long while, but a little while. And today, like I said, was pretty chilly. So let's see what cold steel does. Got 40 degrees cold steel. See what the exhaust is doing. All right, so 50 degrees. So let's say it's actual core temperature is 50 degrees. No, let's just pretend it's 40 because the oil is 40. Been on for probably 45 minutes. So that is the inlet going into the block. That's a 95. Let's see what it does next to it. 51. The draw. 45. So it's gaining but not quickly. And then of course this isn't going to make a difference at all. That's still stone cold. But it has raised 10 degrees in about 45 minutes. So I'll maybe go another 45 minutes to an hour and it'd probably be a lot better to try to start it.
Not bad. suspected this is a trick throttle for generator only because it's extremely sensitive you have off and then obviously full throttle to whatever it's governed at and there is really no play in between there's just not a lot of movement there but it runs runs pretty good too can't believe how fast it fired right up like that in a little bit colder temperature I just thought it would struggle, maybe I'd have to shoot it with ether or something, but I didn't even have to do that. So overall I'm happy with this startup. Nothing like the sound of a V12 Detroit just blazing away. I don't know if I'd want to be having it singing in my ear all day long in a truck or a well drilling rig or whatever generator, be standing next to it servicing it all day long, but they do have a unique sound. And I guess, tweaking them up a little bit, they do produce some type of power. But anyway, runs perfect. No surprise there with literally 700 hours on the thing. It's got good oil pressure. Don't know what I'm going to do with it. But this is a start video. And this is exciting. Thanks for watching. Till next time.